Mika, uh, this is a, I mean, this album is not a departure for, for the band from your live shows. No. But certainly from the first album it is. Yes, absolutely. Why is that? Um, well, I think just after being together for eight years and... Eight years? Eight years. Wow. Yes, indeed. Um, I was still a newspaper reporter. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. We had newspapers. <laughs> Way back in the olden days. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I think just after being together for a long time and getting to know how we all mesh together, what our own personal interests are, and smooshing all of that together, uh -huh. um, then we really just were able to grow into this album. You know, the first album was really just about trying to showcase everything that we were capable of doing and now this CD has really allowed us to show off not only our individual selves with all of our original compositions but then as an entire group you know how far we've come in those eight years um, and it's just really exciting to be able to and it even has vocals uh, yes vocals, vocals. yes um, Chelsea Luker is singing on a couple tunes that she wrote and um, you even get to hear the rap stylings of Michelle Medler, which is pretty exciting uh, and uh, pretty killing. Um, and and you even get to hear me in the backgrounds a little uh -huh. bit here and there. So, uh -huh. yes. Uh, there's a tune called Quad Stalker. Yes. You don't really have... I thought you might ask me a question <laughs> about that. <laughs> this band doesn't really have Quad Stalkers, do they? Well, we have been known to have some quad stalkers, some of them more affectionately than others. Um, and that tune was really just, you know, kind of came out of that experience of, of having those what I call overly enthusiastic yes. fans who tend to cross a line, which I'm sure everyone at some point in their lives has experienced. Someone just taking that extra step that just makes things a little bit awkward and <laughs> having to uh, embrace that and, and handle it and, mm -hmm. and deal with it as, as best as you can. How, how have the dynamics of the group in, in working together, how have those changed over the years? Have you settled everything? No. <laughs> <laughs> no way, Jose. But um, that's, I mean, that's a part of the process, yeah. is not resolving all of that. And, and we're always, I think that we, we just can't keep up with our ideas because we have, we're always having, you know, exciting ideas about what, where we could take the band next and what we want to do. Um, but then each of us have sort of our own individual lives. And so the timing just hasn't, we haven't gotten the timing together to really be able to see all of those projects through. And so we're particularly pleased to be able to um, see this this project through because it's it's something that's been a long time coming and that we're really excited to to get up and going. So you mean there are other projects that are going to be completely different? Hopefully. That's, <laughs> that's the plan. You know, we want to try and keep things move, always moving forward and, uh -huh. and seeing what we can do with four saxophones. So... Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a jazz record. Not a jazz record. Although there are some touches, nuances. I mean, yes. Of the, uh, absolutely. Of, of of from the first album, it's obviously the quadraphone. Yes. You know, and it's obviously yes. saxophones. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What What is the function? Where does the baritone sax? What What, what is What is the job of the baritone sax? Oh. In In the quadraphones. In the quadraphones. Yeah. Um, I think that my role as a Barry Sax player, in, specifically in the quadraphones, is to provide the harmonic base foundation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well as kind of a rhythmic foundation. Now, Leah and Ward, when they are supplementing us, sort of take up a lot of that slack. But when it's just the four of us, then that is, I consider that to be kind of both of my primary mm -hmm. responsibilities mm -hmm. are with mm -hmm. really keeping the timing as solid as possible and just providing that harmonic base huh. for everybody else to yeah. build off of. Yeah. That's kind of the role of most baritone sax mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. most bands, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it difficult to play? Uh, it's heavy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's heavy and it sort of takes a physical toll, but... Um, and it, it takes a lot of air. You yeah. know, I always tell people it just takes a lot of hot air, which I'm full of, <laughs> so that works perfectly. Um, and and then I suppose it also takes getting used to um, taking on that role 
as opposed to being someone like Chelsea or Mary Sue who are, you know, more of the melody players yeah. um, and they have that kind of role um, or Michelle having a very strong soloing um, role, I have to take on that role so I'm, yeah. I'm listening to things differently and I'm yeah. thinking about things differently yeah. um, than when I'm playing alto. I interviewed Benny Maupin a couple of weeks ago. No kidding. And I asked, because he... he you know, he's he, doing something yeah, recently. He, he, yeah, he, he, in Portland playing with Thera Memory. Yeah, right, right. Uh, but we're talking about the different personalities of the, of the bass clarinet, the tenor sax, and all those. Right. And, they, and he said, yes, yes, they, are, they absolutely have different, you know, different personalities, mm -hmm. sometimes competing mm -hmm. personalities. Mm -hmm. what, what is the personality of the baritone sax? Oh... Um, I mean, it's a strong personality. It is a strong personality. It can be kind of a, a quirky personality, uh -huh. uh, you know, because if you're playing funky lines, yeah. then you've got to be able to, you know, throw those yeah. Yeah. pops and low lines out there yeah. Yeah. Um, to really f be funky. Yeah. Um, but it also can be kind of um, on the sidelines, like, because you're, you're trying to blend with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And um, so you got to know you got to know when when to have presence and when to blend mm -hmm. when to, when to sort of come back and let the other instruments take that over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you have uh, a baritone sax hero? I mean, I, I always think you know, because of a saxophone quartet, I always think of Amy Bluey in right. the world sax quartet. Right. Who, yes. who was who was He's your pretty hero? Pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a tough question. Um, because it's kind of contextual, right? Yeah, yeah. So Hamiet yeah. Bluet was amazing with the uh, yeah. World Saxophone Quartet, uh -huh. and um, you know. But there's Jerry Mulligan. Yeah, Jerry Mulligan. I, you know, yeah. and a lot of people maybe poo-poo Jerry Mulligan, but I don't. I really love um, yeah. and admire the way he he plays so melodically. Yeah. And is able to yeah. Yeah. work around the changes. Um, with yeah. a very pretty melody. I, yeah. I really admire that quality. Pepper Adams mm -hmm. uh, is just an incredible uh, saxophone player. Uh, oddly enough, though, I actually tend to find more of my influences from non-saxophone really? players. Oh, that's not unusual. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 Because I'm more drawn to the whole person or package, if you yeah. will. Yeah. Um, one of my great admirers is who's actually behind you is Charles Mingus yes. for his compositional yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, his yeah. ability to perform on the bass and for his character. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think that anybody could compose and play the way he does without the character that he had. So, uh, so would you say that the personality of the baritone sax is you? Yes. Are you a baritone sax <laughs> I saxophone? Think so. I mean, yeah. I I do like to think that I yeah. I, I enjoy playing other instruments and being in different um, yeah. musical situations. I really enjoy being able to play the classical alto. Uh, I enjoy being able to play um, lead alto when I can and also playing uh, doubles for musicals and whatnot. But there is a certain resonance that the Barry sax has for me yeah. and especially playing with the quadraphones. Yes. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a good fit. It is. Yes. Okay. If uh, you had to choose one tune to preview for people, what would it what would it be? You can think about it. Well, I, I've got two. I'm going to throw out. Okay. One is the title track, uh -huh. simply because it's the title track, yes. and also because um, we had the great fortune of having Jennifer Batten. Yeah. Uh, uh, featured on a few tunes on our album, and so you know to be able to showcase her would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and also one tune that I of the whole album that I find is creeping into my head. You know, I might be washing dishes or yeah. something like that. Is American Dreams. Ah. Uh, so oh. I'd say either of those two would be okay. a good taste. All right. And now, of course, I could be biased too and pick my tune. <laughs> which is the what could possibly go wrong uh, okay. because it's got some fun. I added some of the fun personality of the Barry Sachs <laughs> characteristics into that particular tune. But uh, okay. I, I would uh, unselfishly recommend either Get the Funk Out or American Dreams. Okay. <laughs> All the information about the gig is on, is on this page and the tune is underneath this screen. Thanks. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, Tom.